we saw that the simplest form of a for loop that used this expression 1 to 10 actually created something called a range. And it's worth taking a little bit of time to look into the nature of ranges in more detail. So we saw 1, 2, 10 gives us the values 1 to 10, and it's inclusive. So it goes from 1 all the way up to 10. We can also say until, in which case we will be exclusive on the high end. This is useful for going through, for example, the <clears throat> uh, different valid indices in, in an array because the array is exclusive in its length. So we'll typically do one until the array's length. As we also saw, though, you might not want to do that because the array will has a method called indices that actually gives you back the valid indices so you don't have to use a to or an until which is one less thing that you can mess up when you're doing that. Now this gives us values of integers counting forward. What else can we do with our ranges? Well it turns out that they work with characters just as well. Uh, basically all of the integer types should work nicely with these. Remember putting the capital L here or lowercase l, but the capital L is typically easier for people to read and tell that it's not another one, turns the int into a long and so we can make a range of longs. What about doubles? Well, it turns out that you can make a range of doubles, but in order to actually use it this is only partially specified at this point. It needs to know a step. And for that we specify by. Because in the case of integers it's very intuitive to just count by ones. In the case of doubles there isn't a step that, nat that is naturally going to make sense. So we might want to count by point ones or some other value. We can also use by to count backwards. So if I wanted to count from 10 down to 1, well, if I just type in that, I get a range of nothing because there is nothing that counts by 1 from 10 to 1. But if I stick a by minus 1, then it will count backwards. And of course, I don't have to count by 1s. I can count backward by 2s. I could count forward by 2s or any other value that, that I wanted. Uh, you know, so the next time you're taking a field sobriety test, you can just pull out your trusty Scala and figure out how to count backwards from 100 to 1 by 7s. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that gives us kind of a, a lot of the abilities that we have on our ranges. We can use pretty much any numeric type. If it's a double, we have to specify the step that's used and using the steps allows us to count by various increments forward or backward. Using that backward counting, we can actually write yet another version of our eval poly. This one will look kind of a combination of these two. I'm going to get rid of the POW, but I'm going to continue doing indexing. So. And we'll call this eval poly step because we're introducing the step aspect of this. And I want to go through the indices uh, backwards. So I'm actually going to explicitly, wrong key, put in here. I want to go from coefs dot length minus one to zero by minus one. So our i is going to be counting uh, down, which in this case is actually starting at this end, the negative one, and we're counting down on our indices. I am going to use the power that we used before and so this allows me to get rid of POW and use the power 
but I'm still indexing in and I'm still using this index, but now I am counting by negative ones. And let's make sure that this actually does what we want. Oh, well, it compiles. YYP step. Sure enough, we have another zero. Uh, not exactly an exhaustive test, but it shows us that we're definitely in the right direction here. So we now have three different versions of functions that will evaluate the polynomial, all of which kind of use the for loop in different ways. This last one uses some additional functionality on the range type.